empire is growing exponentially. There's no telling, you know, where it's going to go, where it's going to hit. We're at zero percent containment and a red flag warning over the incident right now. And again, this fast moving wildfire has destroyed more than 100 structures, many of them homes, and more than 4,000 others are still threatened. Yeah, and we can tell you this just a few moments ago Shasta County now issued some evacuation orders, not warnings, orders. So we want to show you this. This is a look at the evacuation orders for Tehama, Plumas, and Shasta County, just to give you an idea. So Butte County is not shown on here where they have their own warnings and orders, but they use a different system. So we're just going to focus on the other counties. Also, Edie, we just got an update on this fire. Yeah, it is now up to almost a quarter of a million acres, 239,000 acres. And again, no containment, 134 structures destroyed. So let's uh, go up to live copter three for the latest look at this fire. And and again, it's just so expansive. It's hard to kind of get your mind around what that perimeter looks like and what firefighters are up against right now. Yeah, you know, and the best way sometimes to give you an idea just for scale is every once in a while you'll see an airplane or a helicopter flying up and down the line, and it's a tiny speck. And when mm -hmm. you zoom out even this far, you almost can't see the plane or, or the helicopter, which just tells you the, the massive line that they're up against and we were watching uh, this side of the fire yesterday when we unfortunately saw it creep into some homes right along highway 32 and 32 is still kind of the the line in the sand if you will that's being drawn there by firefighters and crews to try to keep the fire from progressing but the numbers earlier today from orco on the ground orco mana saying that they expect this fire to grow roughly four to five thousand acres an hour and that kind of does uh, make sense when we've heard that now that the fire has grown up to nearly 240,000 acres today. And uh, we just got some information from our producer basically comparing this to past fires and the Caldor fire, which was really just a monster fire, burned 221,000 acres. So this has already surpassed that in terms of what we've seen in terms of acreage. Go ahead. Go yeah, I was just going to say, look at that plane there. That gives yeah. you an idea of the, the scope of this fire. That's a that's an airplane that's uh, been flying. I can't tell if it's one of the tankers or one of the uh, the spotter crews, but it just gives you an idea of how large this fire is. And again, this is now affecting people in four different counties. Another indication of the size of this. Uh, again, Butte and Tehama, which is what we were reporting yesterday. And then today, the addition of Plumas and Shasta counties. And just within about the last few minutes, uh, mandatory evacuation orders for parts of Shasta County. Looks like they're lining up for another drop here. We saw the uh, spotter plane in front and it looks like the retardant plane coming in behind as they line up to figure out where they can put that drop and make the most of that retardant. We can see some flames on the ground right there through the smoke and we'll watch that uh, plane bank left there and see if we have a chance to watch it make its drop as we see the smoke there backlit by the sun that's uh, starting to set today. And you know, people throughout this entire region would be aware of this fire, even if you're nowhere necessarily close to it. I was mapping, we saw it when I was just picking my daughter up from camp today. You could see the enormous cloud of both of the smoke and the cloud formation and we mapped it out and that would be an almost two hour drive from Sacramento and yet it looked huge uh, just there on the horizon and there we've got the drop we're waiting for. All right, let's go to Heather right now as we're watching this. And again, just to give you an idea of how large the fire is, that's a lot of retardant that's dropped. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but when you think about how much just was dropped right there and then you look at how large this fire is and look there in the foreground, it looks like a smaller uh, spot, spot fire, fire that's, mm -hmm. that's probably started because of some of those ladder fuels that get up in the air and then drop down. So Heather, uh, yeah, we're, we're getting into the quarter a uh, million acre range here. And mm -hmm. I know you've got some numbers to kind of compare with that with. Yeah, I'll get to those in a minute. But this fire, of course, has been very much wind driven over the last few days. The retardant drops that we were watching, these are actually along the flanks of the fire. So they're flying along the east side of the fire along Highway 32. They can't get to the head of the fire, which is moving along with the winds from south to north because there is so much smoke and because this fire just continues to move along so quickly. Red flag conditions through at least 11 o'clock this evening. These are forecast wind gusts at 10 o'clock this evening as things kind of settle down, at least in the atmosphere, and we get that sudden burst of wind. That's the onshore breeze coming in through the delta and eventually funneling its way up into the northern part of the Sacramento Valley. Some gusts between 30 and 35 miles per hour. That could really be nasty for fire crews. 
This is overnight. The winds will back off some, but notice they stay from the south. And of course, we know fuels in northern Tehama County just very dry, very sparse, perfect for the fire to continue to be able to skip along very quickly. Here are some of those numbers. Let's start with the 2022 fire year. Just over 330,000 acres burned the entire year statewide. The largest fire being the Mosquito Fire at 76,000 acres last year. Also a year where we had about 300,000 acres burn. Both of these years relatively low as far as fire activity goes. The largest fire last year being the Smith River Complex fire at 95,000 acres. Now you see that in comparison with what's going on this season. I just updated the number for the park fire again, closing in on a quarter million acres just within the last few days. This number still needs to be updated. The season total from Cal Fire. We know that number has been jumping up along with the number for the park fire. And again, just given weather conditions, it doesn't look like this fire's growth is going to slow down anytime soon. Back to you. Okay, Heather, thanks for that. Well, almost two dozen cars have been destroyed after a grass fire in Turlock. Actually, we'll get to that story in just a minute. We're going to go back to Live Copter 3 right now just because of the uh, scope of the fire and wanted to show you uh, the latest there. We know that. Uh, People live up in these areas. We were talking about some of the communities along Highway 32. And uh, again, we're kind of on the east side of this fire looking west through the smoke. You can kind of see the light from the setting sun. Right now, one thing that you notice in Heather's map is that the wind direction right now, it would be pushing this fire away from Chico, which is, of course, the most heavily populated area close to this fire. So uh, a real concern if we had seen a shift in the wind in that direction right now. Uh, I mean, th that that's really the population center for this region, and the wind is pushing this fire away from the town of the city so of Chico. I wonder if it's possible. I know Livecopter 3, they're doing a million things up there trying to just make sure we get these great shots here if there's a possibility that we can use that street overlay because we're always all about giving people information about exactly what we're looking at where we're looking uh, and maybe we're just too far out right now to really get a, a good representation of what streets uh, are in that area but we do know that the fire has uh, been uh, going up against highway 32 and we have seen some homes in that area uh, that have burned some homes that have burned as a result and you can just see how long this uh, line is here that firefighters are having to deal with so it's uh, it is quite the scene to watch how, I mean, you look at this and think, how do you fight something like this? Absolutely, and to your point, Golston, we are so aware that we have many evacuees watching our coverage, and we work really hard to just get you the most precise information we can. So there you can see Highway 32 and the proximity of the flames right now to the highway. Uh, keep in mind again that Deer Creek Highway is just a two-lane highway. And, you know, yeah. in some of the more urban areas, that would be considered, you know, more of a boulevard. And for this area, it just gives you, again, an indication of a lot of these roads are these kind of small mountain roads, uh, winding roads. And for people who are under evacuation or orders or even warnings, uh, that does come into play. It is one of the factors as you decide uh, when to get out, when to leave yourself enough time to get away from this fire. That is so helpful when we're able to see uh, when we get this close and you can see all of those other side roads that are popping up on the template there just to give you an idea of where we're talking about. We know there are folks who live in that area and Platte Mountain Road, Platte Road, Majestic, uh, Home Place, and then it winds down to the, the, the further south down to Forest Ranch, and we've seen uh, some of the damage there. So uh, just a great way to illustrate that and uh, let people know exactly what we're looking at, and the people who live there certainly know this area well. So uh, yeah, we know that the 32 is the line they're trying to draw to keep this fire from spreading.